Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my presentation. This evening, I'm going to take you on a whirlwind tour on the future prospects of microchipping people. I'm going to challenge you with the notion that every single piece of ID that you own will be replaced with a tiny microchip implant about the size of a grain of rice. But first, let's go back in time to this, the first automated computer, the ENIAC, developed by the Moore School of Electrical Engineering at the University of Pennsylvania. This first computer weighed over 30 tons, was over 100 feet long, and had 18,000 vacuum tubes. If anything went wrong with one of those vacuum tubes, each one had to be individually checked. It was used initially in secret during World War II to calculate ballistic equations and trajectories. A computation that will take new, usually about 12 hours only took 30 seconds with the aid of the ENIAC. Americans in 1946, on a Sunday morning, awoke to headlines that read, New Wonder Brain, Army Robot Brain, Mechanical Whiz Kid, Better Than Einstein, Thinking with Electrons. And my two favorite slogans or headlines, Throw Away the Books, Kids, The ENIAC Will End Math. <laughs> and, because I'm a mother, it won't look after your baby, but little else stops the ENIAC. What always makes me go, wow, when I look at this image, this famous image, are the men and women of the ENIAC who are seen here and depicted inside the computer, interacting with it, getting information from it, programming it. It is as if they are in the heart of the computer and they are surrounded by its vital organs. Shortly after the ENIAC, vacuum tubes were replaced by transistors and transistors by microchips. Let's fast forward now, 50 years after the ENIAC, to a performance art piece by bio artist Eduardo Katz in Brazil. In time capsule, Katz acquires an animal injector kit and implants an implant in his left leg in front of a live audience, which was broadcast to the internet and on television, transcending space and time. He then proceeds to register himself on a pet database online. What did this mean? On reflection, Katz says, it is as if the body has become an extension of the computer and not the other way around. He calls this less traumatic embodiment, but does point to the dramatic conflict that a microchip implant will cause humanity. For me personally, time capsule, symbolize the dehumanization of individuals, the fact that we have all become numbers and codes. The following year, Professor Kevin Warwick engages in Cyborg 1.0. He receives an implant in his left arm injected by his family doctor, George Bulos, and he's able to walk the corridors in his office building and the doors miraculously open in front of him because the walls and corridors have been rigged up with radio frequency identification readers. He walks into his office, the lights turn on, his computer turns on to his favorite web page. However, it is in Cyborg 2.0 that the greatest learnings are to be given and made. In Cyborg 2.0, Warwick receives a procedure headed by two neurosurgeons where a hundred micro electrode array was injected and fired up to the medium nerve fibers in his left arm. He is able to communicate with his wife Irina, depicted here, over what they describe, over a network over what they describe as Morse code. Ladies and gentlemen, this was an Alexander Graham Bell moment in consequence that the world missed. In Cyborg 2.0, Warwick was also able to control remotely objects over the internet just by opening and closing his hand. He was also able, through the neural interface, to operate a wheelchair. Imagine now this large wall-to-ceiling computer, the ENIAC, fired into the body, up to the median nerve in the arm. I will now perform three scenarios for you. But before I do, I want to tell you that post-cyborg experiments, we had real, real, real innovations deployed. We had over 200 individuals implanted for club patronage, for access control, electronic payments at the Baja Beach Club chain. 
there, was a VI, there were numerous VIPs implanted, for example, the Mexico Attorney General for access control and security and some of his staff. There were hobbyist implantees implanted by their own volition so that they did not need keys and opened the door and opened their, their front door and car door. The Papuan Legislative Council even considered in 2008 to implant HIV AIDS carriers who were still sexually active. There are many, many states in the US, and I could give you many more examples. They have anti-chipping laws. States like Florida, Oklahoma, Ohio, California, North Dakota, Missouri, Georgia, anti-chipping laws. This is not conspiracy and fundamentalist paranoia. So the scenarios I will perform point to these social implications. They have come from interviewing real people, and they do not necessarily show you my beliefs or those of my fellow coll collaborators, but they have been taken through observation and key informants. Before I continue with the actual scenarios, I just want to mention some of you may find these extreme. However, when you compare them to the projections of credible futurists and of laboratories around the world, they are quite conservative. Act one. Hey, mate, mate, guess what I got for my birthday? A next generation eye plant. Oh, I can hardly believe it. Mum said, look, I really trust you. This is a sign of my trust. And you know, you're entering the matriculation years into adulthood. And this is for you, son. I said, thanks, mum. Look what I can do, everyone. Look, think iTunes, category heavy rock, download ACDC, and that's it. It's all on the cloud. And now all I have to do is get my personal network devices and tap into it. Oh, the convenience, the rewards. I'm going to save so much cash. In fact, I don't even need cash anymore. I've got the eye plant. I feel one with technology. I feel wireless, man. Oh, the network, I just walk into a network and it fills my presence ambiently. Oh, I did say to Dad, Dad, I know you got concerns, Dad. I know, but just chill out, Dad. I don't worry about my privacy, Dad. Everyone talks privacy, but they've all got loyalty scheme cards. I'm not a terrorist, Dad. I've got nothing to hide. And Dad, I know you and your mates go on about uber valence, but Dad, I looked on Wikipedia and it's not there anymore. I reckon they've solved all the problems. Health insurance, car insurance, premiums, life insurance in the future, they're all gonna be a lot cheaper. You know why? because they can have all my vital statistics. I've got nothing to hide. I do my laps. I eat well. I go to footy training. One day I'm going to play for the Rabbitohs, and they're going to know my commitment. And I'm not going to go against the curfews. No way, no siree. I'm going to get in the car when I'm supposed to. And I said to mum, look me up on the grid. Don't expect any phone calls from me. Anyway, look. The single sign-on is the best thing that's happened ever in this world. I don't have to remember any passwords. I don't carry batteries. I don't need keys. I don't need cables and wires, which I always confuse and leave behind. So I've got to go home, look, the, look at the video that they gave me, and then just, just do it is my advice. Act two, the entrepreneur who wishes to deploy an eye plant for commercial reasons. I've called this uh, stand-up meeting. It's a product development meeting just for about 10 minutes. Um, people, we received the last quarter results, and I just want to say we are still number two. The Alzheimer's market is beyond a doubt the one that is ga gaining the most traction. The carers love this product. The Alzheimer's patients cannot wander. They cannot go outside their homes. The facilities take them, and they are controlled. They are safe. I know some of you had concerns that some of the Alzheimer's patients would be chipped against their will, but no, the carers are their guardians. And I have to say, the, the resources are being saved en masse. In our second market, we have the correctional services. We are still, still trailing the number one opponent. But what will happen here is wonderful. The prisons have come on board with great numbers. We have about 25% of the market share just in Australia. No more GPS anklets, no more tampering, no more possibility of getting those parolees lost. And the parolees love it. You know why? Because 
It's invisible. The implant's invisible. And they say there's much better chance of rehabilitation. And they're not stigmatized anymore. Okay, I want you to dream innovations. Our next product is about the consumer market. We're not worrying about Alzheimer's now. We're doing well. We're not worrying about correctional services, but the consumer market. I want you to think big, big people. I want you to think medical bionics, fusion with entertainment services, human enhancement, amplification. If they want to be Superman, we'll give them Superman. Just dream. The future is in your hands. Scenario three, the mentally ill patient. I can't, I can't take this anymore. All these spy drones, all these surveillance cameras. I'm losing my mind. I know what mum said when I get anxious to call her, but this implant in my head is messing with me. I just don't know if she's going to believe me this time. Okay, get, get a hold of yourself. Dial mum. Mum? Hi, yeah, it's me, mum. Mum, can you please tell the doctor that I don't want the implant in my head anymore? I, I know I need the one in my arm to exist, but the one in my head's not working. What do you mean technology can't fail, mum? Of course it can fail. I'm feeling it. I was okay at the beginning, but the last three months, I can't sleep. I feel like people are micro-analyzing every move I make. Mum? What do you mean? They're going to stop my social security disability payments if I take the implant in my head out. Don't you understand, Mum? I'm not an animal. I've got dignity, you know. I go into the shops. They know there goes the crazy one. I go into the airport. I fly on the plane. They're laughing at me, Mum. I can't even get a job without them scanning my eye plant. Yeah. Mum? No, Mum, don't hang up. She's hung up. I know what they're going to do now. They're going to release drugs into my body. And then I'm going to lose myself for another three days. I can't do it again. I told them I had no say. I just woke up one morning and found the eye plan. It was controlling everything. I could feel the stimulations. <laughs> Denial of service attack. Re- uh, Assemble me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these hypothetical scenarios are vital. They have profound implications for our humanity, especially because Technology has been explicitly linked to teleology. Yes, indeed, the deaf will hear and have heard. The blind will see, the mute will speak, the lame will skip. Biomedical engineering is testament to this, and we embrace these wondrous works. They are miracles. However, we must be mindful these same technologies will be misused by individuals and those agents in authority, potentially. And we will lose our ability to make decisions for ourselves. These are just some of the moral and ethical dilemmas. We are sleepwalking into a world that has become over-reliant on technique. Soon, we will not just be talking about the social implications of technology, but about how society has become technology. We, who created the computer, will invite it into our body to govern us, and the machine itself will rule over us. Ladies and gentlemen, I leave you with one final question. Who will control this emerging new smart surveillance infrastructure, and what will be the rights of the controlled? Thank you. <laughs>